Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at designing column internals. So I've got this column set up here. Uh, this was done for the system benzene. Let's just look at this benzene, toluene, and cumene. I'm using the SRK equation of state as my method. And in my simulation, I have previously run a DSTWU column and now have replaced it with RADFRAC using the results that I had gotten from my DSTWU. Okay, so at this point I have run the simulation, we'll run it again, and I have results. But Really, that's not what we want to be focusing on today. I mean, I can look at those results and see whether or not I got purities that I want. And perhaps I should, you know, maybe add trays or something like that. But instead today, we're going to come back and we're going to look at our configuration. And we're going to today focus on this design and specify column internals. So. We're going to do this. It says it's missing hydraulic data. Uh, I'm going to tell it to generate that. It'll take just a moment. And I come in with this. Now, what I have to do is I need to add new sections. And one section will be above the feed, one will be below the feed. This is set up based on what I've told the simulation in terms of number of trays and feed locations so far. And so I'm going to add new sections. And so this first section will start at stage two and go to stage six. Okay. And my other section will start at stage seven. And go to the bottom. 11 is my reboiler, so 10. Okay, I can do sieve trays or you can replace these with some other sort of, these are valve trays or bubble cap trays. Um, well, I'll just choose one for one section and one for the other. I'm going to leave these as default values. I'm going to want single pass. And if I do this, what I want to do next is I want to view the data that's in here. So we'll say view. And what it's going to give me is it's going to give me lots of different details. So these are valve trays. So these just lift up as the gas pushes forward. And I can set these up for various types. I can choose different styles here. If I change my mind, I can go between tray and packing at this point. Okay, and I have lots of choices here. I can change the default sizes of any of these aspects. If I go to design parameters, it's going to ask me about what percent of flooding am I going to be willing to accept and some factors for things like over design or foaming, uh, so forth. So some of these things that we've been discussing in class. I also will have a tray geometry summary which is going to kind of give me a nice one sheet place there. But now remember that this was for only one section. If I want to do it for the other, I would need to go through and do the same kind of thing. Now, all of these things here, some of the things that I really want to point out, other than that you'll need to change these and we'll discuss some of this later, but the calculation methods, these are various equations that are the established equations. Some of these were used in your book. Uh, in this one, they used FAIR in your book. Uh, we didn't discuss this one, and these are three primary manufacturers and what they recommend. And so we'll just go with one of those. And I can do this for both sections of my tower. If I, let's run this again now that I've established new internals. And if I look at this, one of the things that gives me the option to do is view the hydraulic plots. 
I also can get it from the column design, but I want to be able to do that. And when I do this, what you're going to see is uh, some scary looking things. First of all, if there's a big red X, it means this is not a design that's going to work. What it's going to do, let's look at one of the trays that's good. So below the feed, it looks like I'm OK. The black dot in each of these diagrams, the black dot is going to show me where I'm operating. This is operating for vapor flow rate versus liquid flow rate. And then on top of this, they've shown me where I'm going to get entrained liquid, where I'm going to have flooding, where I'm going to have weeping, just a little bit of weeping or a lot of weeping, which is called dumping. Okay, And I want to really be in this sweet spot here. Now, I'm above that for all of these other trays. So everything above the feed, I am in this region of flooding. Now flooding means the liquid is moving up the tower essentially, which means the liquid is not falling into the tower. This is a problem of having too high a vapor flow, so I need to increase the liquid so that I have a relative flow relationship that is appropriate. So one of the ways that I can do that is I can come in here and if I want to decrease flooding, I can decrease the reflux ratio. So let's just do that and run my simulation again. And I actually have my hydraulic plots open so we can look at those. Um, and as I do this, it's going to start lowering where I'm actually operating. Looks like it's still running. Okay, I can increase this if I have a problem with weeping. Those are some of the changes I can make. I can also make physical changes to the column internals. Now, of course, if I decrease the reflux ratio, I'm going to need to increase the number of stages. So if I were to increase this, and I'm just going to kind of choose an arbitrarily large number here, um, my feed probably should change relative to that. And since I made a rather large choice, I'll go to tray 9. This is going to mean that I need to change my sections. So my feed is now at tray 9. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction there. Okay, and so you're going to have to change your section so that they are appropriate for the values that you've put in. And I'll stay with the sort of material that I have. Can't tell if it's finished. <laughs> and I actually, I've made it worse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's, I'm way above the operating point in all of these. So I could do some small changes to the uh, column internals. Um, maybe I want to increase the packing height or the section height. So 0.75 meters. Um, you can run it again, look at your internals, and see if that made any difference. No, not really. You can, um, OK, I seem to be stressing out the thing. It's running very slowly. I can come in here and change other kinds of aspects of what I've got here. So I decreased the reflux ratio to 1.1. If you'll recall, based on our DSTWU, the minimum reflux ratio was 0.94. So, OK, I could go to 1.05, run it again, again, looking at my 
and you can keep playing with this. And in general, there's going to be, okay, so it just finished the rerun there. Uh, I really haven't improved anything. Um, I need to look at some other kinds of changes that I might make. It's going to give me all sorts of diagnostics. Uh, there are kind of some general rules of thumb. I will be providing you some handouts that will give you some better ideas. But remember that if I'm above the chart, okay, like I am here, the problem is that I have too high a gas flow rate relative to the liquid flow rate. So I need more liquid coming back into the tower. If I am down in this region down below here, okay, so let's look at this one here. If I were down in this region, then my problem is weeping and I have too much liquid flow rate and I need to increase the gas flow rate or decrease the liquid flow rate. I can do that by changing the design on the trays themselves, okay. I can try changing the type of tray. And in general, what you really need to do is develop some, um, a feel for what's going to happen. Okay, so I kind of recommend just playing with it a little bit, okay, and seeing where that changes my graphs. All right, so now then, I'm up over here instead of over here. Uh, this is pushing me closer to this entrainment area where that means liquid droplets being carried. And so I'm just going to keep trying different things until I get a design that works. Recognize that as you decrease the reflux ratio, you're going to need to increase the number of stages in order to get the separation. So don't lose sight on of the fact that Overall, you need to get a good separation. So I'm not going to torture this anymore to just show you things that you might try, but I invite you to just experiment, play with things, and start figuring out what works well and what doesn't work well. And in this case, it's actually quite likely that I need to move my feed flow up a little bit. Again, I just did this with kind of a random number generator rather than actual uh, looking at my compositions. So this is the idea of what you're going to need to do to get tower internals. It's going to calculate for you diameter of the tower and so forth. Um, you have all sorts of options when you're going through and looking at those internal materials. Okay, And you can go through and play with changing any of these things that you wish. Okay, so that concludes this little lesson, and I thank you very much for your time.